Hi, I'm Lauren Malhoyt, and I'm here with the ACI 101 video series. Today we're going to be talking about fabric discovery. Before we get into the architecture of ACI and ultimately the fabric discovery, let's talk about traditional network architecture real quick. Generally, this is going to look like some sort of core aggregation and access switches. So perhaps it looks something like this with your Nexus 7000 switches at the core, your Nexus 5000 switches at the aggregation layer, and then your Nexus 2000 switches at the access layer. These may not even be Nexus switches. They could be cat switches or even switches from another vendor. The one thing of note here though, is that this architecture isn't wrong, but it's built for older traffic flows, namely the north-south traffic flow, which means most of the data was coming in through a perimeter firewall, going to our endpoint devices, and then going back out through that perimeter firewall. Now, with the popularization of virtualization, and even more recently, containers and microservices, big data, most of our traffic is actually contained within the data center. We refer to this type of traffic flow as being east-west. Now, not only is the traffic flow different, there's just more data traffic in our data centers now than there used to be. And we need a new networking topology that can handle that. This is where the spine leaf architecture comes in. In this case, we have two tiers, the top tier being the spine and the bottom tier, or maybe access tier, being the leaf switches. Generally, the spines will be Nexus 9500 series switches, although there's at least one exception to that with a 9300 switch. The leaf switches will be Nexus 9300 series switches. Each leaf will connect to each spine switch, making it a full mesh fabric. Now, any endpoints, which could be VMs, bare metal machines, or containers, or even layer four through seven services, will then only have two hops between any two endpoints. Now, in most cases, the spine switch will not connect to anything other than another leaf switch. When we're only talking about six or eight switches, this would be fairly easy to set up manually. But in most cases, we're probably talking about at least a few dozen, if not a few hundred switches, depending on the size of the network. So this leads us to our automatic fabric discovery within ACI. Once we rack and stack the switches and the controllers, which are called application policy infrastructure controllers, we can start discovery of the switches. Now this does require that the APIC be set up, and we'll talk about that in a second. So logically it would look like this though. We'll start with an APIC, we'll log in and go to the fabric tab, where we'll see at least one leaf has already been populated. Now this will be a leaf switch that is physically and directly connected to the APIC. We then enter simple information like node name and node ID, and the leaf switch will find the spine switch. We enter the node ID and name for this spine, and then a new leaf switch will appear. And the pattern goes on like that to fully populate our fabric. Of course, this is a lot of information to enter, even if it is just the node ID and node name for each switch. But don't worry, there are ways to do this programmatically as well, using a simple CSV file. Now the ACI fabric uses LLDP and DHCP based fabric discovery to automatically discover the fabric switch nodes, assign the infrastructure VXLAN tunnel endpoint addresses, and install the firmware on its switches. In the last slide, we talked about having to set up the APIC as well as the VTAP addresses getting automatically assigned during initial fabric discovery but we were only manually entering the node ID and node name. So where does all this other information come from? Well, it comes from the initial APIC setup. Have you ever set up a UCS chassis and the first time you had to actually put in uh, scripted install information in your Fabric Interconnects? This is really similar to that. Now, there are less than 10 prompts that you have to answer in regards to the ACI Fabric to gather the necessary information to configure your network. Now, these prompts are, Enter the name of the ACI fabric. This could be arbitrary, but something that makes sense for your organization. Next, we enter the number of controllers. This is either going to be three or five, as that's what's acceptable for supported production environments right now. We also enter the controller ID. So if this is the first APIC we're setting up, the controller ID will be one. If it's the second, the controller ID will be two, et cetera, et cetera. We also enter the controller name. Again, this is arbitrary, uh, but it will probably make sense in your environment and be descriptive. 
Finally, the VTEP address pool. This is where we talk just a little bit about VXLAN. ACI is a VXLAN fabric overlay, which means a lot of things, but most notably, you're not stuck with 4,094 VLAN segments anymore. You can actually scale out to 16 million VXLAN segments. And the best part is, you actually don't have to manage too much of it from an administrative point of view. The ACI fabric will handle it for you. Finally, it asks for the VLAN ID of the infrastructure VLAN. This might be new terminology, but it's nothing to be concerned about. The infrastructure VLAN is simply that space in the middle. Let's look at our ACI fabric again. See this area right here? The Cisco APIC communicates in the infrastructure VLAN in band with the Cisco ACI spine and leaf nodes to distribute policies to the points of attachment, being the Cisco leaf, and provide a number of key administrative functions to Cisco ACI. If you're looking for more information, here are some reference sites for you. Thanks so much for watching.